heard Mary Carrillo say he was such a generous man. He was so cool, dramatic looking, the best player in town. They idolized Vitas Gerolaitis. And well, Mary Carrillo now joins us on Tennis Channel to discuss her late friend. It is great to see you, Mayor. Uh, you in terms of talking Vetus, you were teammates, uh, World Team Tennis, the New York Apples. What was it was like an... to be a, a teammate of Vetus Gerolaitis? Uh, so it was a great team, Steve, because it was it was Vetus and Joanne Russell, who's still a very good friend of mine, Billie Jean King, and our captain, Fred Stalin. And so, I mean, I, and we were in New York and the first road trip, I remember it was a morning flight and Vetus gets there late and he's got this unbelievable suit on and he's just got his bag behind him and he's, and I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, I go up to Captain Fred Stalin and I say, hey, is there like a dress code? Are we supposed to be wearing, you know, really good clothes when we travel as a team? And Fred said, Mez, Vetus hasn't gone to sleep yet. So that's what I didn't quite understand about Vitas, but he was a great team player. He really enjoyed himself. And uh, I'll tell you another story. He, at Madison Square Garden, he was in the year-end championships, and he, it was a round robin, eight guys, and he comes up to He was just about to play his match. And I've got a seat. I'm up in the whack seats. I'm, on my, I'm making my way up to the worst seat in Madison Square Garden. And Vitas stops me, and he's like in a rush, and he's got this fistful of box seats, box seat tickets. And he said, Mary, uh, you got to do me a favor. Uh, you got to get four envelopes, and here's a list of the names. And I'm there, oh, yeah, I'll just pull some envelopes out of my keister. What? And just leave these at the will call for these four different sets of tickets, and whatever you do, don't mix them up. He had planted like various girlfriends like at the different quadrants <laughs> of Madison Square Garden, and he like it was like do not whatever you do do not cross the streams. <laughs> so that <laughs> there are a lot of and Jimmy's I'm sure Jimmy's got great stories and great memories of this guy too. He left so many behind. I had I gave the eulogy one of the eulogies Jimmy Connors gave another one at his funeral, and. I said there, his legacy was laughter. I mean, he walked into a room and he made the room better. That's what I was going to ask you about, actually, Mary, is how is it possible for a guy to be with Nastasi, Borg, McEnroe, Connors, and all of those diverse characters consider him yeah. a great friend or one of their best yeah. friends? I mean, how did he pull that off exactly? Well, that's right. And, and Guillermo Villas, too, McEnroe and Connors couldn't, Stan being around each other back in the day. And, you know, Vilas was kind of a loner off by himself and Borg was quiet and Vitas could make every every one of them his friend. It, it was it was something to see. And and I mean when that they we've been showing that seventy seven semifinal at Wimbledon between Vitas and Bjorn. I used to watch them practice at Vitas's court all the time. Because Ruta Gerolitis, his kid sister, was my best friend growing up. And so they knew each other's patterns so well. And as John McEnroe said, he and I were in the quarterfinals on court, the old court two at Wimbledon, and we could just hear the match going on. We could hear the place, this rapturous applause uh, from, from this match, and we're missing it. Our buddy, John, had just finished playing against Connors. Here's our buddy playing, and we heard the match. We didn't really get to see much of it. And what was really something was after the match, Vitas comes into the press conference, and He's being really funny and really smart and just and finally one of the press guys said, Vitas, how could you've just lost this heartbreaker of a match? How can you be so a B? And Vitas said, Hey, you know, I thought I was gonna win that match. I had all this great material, I didn't want to waste it. <laughs> this is who this is who Vitas was. I mean, he's just he was an amazing fellow. You talk about his generosity of spirit. Uh, what was he like with those kids during the clinics? It was great because what uh, uh, Mrs. Gerolaitis um, were, and my mom were also best friends. And so we would go to, you know, he, we would get these vans and we'd fill them up with balls and rackets, all those rackets he gave away. Um, and we'd go to all, you know, the five boroughs and he would have Nastasi and Chrissy and Bjorn. And I mean, he, everybody played for him, everybody, Arthur Ashe. It, it was and so we'd be loading up in the morning, and Mrs. Gerolaitis will have put out this big breakfast buffet, and we're getting the rackets ready, taking the plastic off of them. And, and oh, there was one time where, where Vitas walked in. He clearly had a late night. He walked through the kitchen, and 
the TV was on and he said, so that's Good Morning America. I've never seen it before. And as he walked away, he said, and I hope I never see it again. <laughs> but he was, I, we were, we were, I think it was in the Bronx. Um, I was handing out rackets with Mr. Garolinus, with Vetus's dad, and my sister Gina, and and one of the kids, you know, these kids didn't know anything about tennis. He just was bringing it to them. It was this big park experience. And one of the kids took a racket and took off with it, ran off. And I started running off after the kid. And Vita saw me chasing down this kid. And he said, no, no, let, let him go, let him go. Uh, by the end of the, the clinic, this kid had wandered back and he was on the court. And Vita was showing him how to hit forehands. I mean, there are so many great stories about this guy. Um, and I mean, I'm, I just feel very, very honored and blessed that I got to share the air with him. Obviously, you grew up together. You made the transition to broadcasting before Vetus, but we've got this photo to show you when Vetus first started his commentating career. Three legends yeah. here, Barry McKay, Ted Robinson, and Vetus. Tell us a little bit more about yeah. this. No, I mean, Vetus, he, he was, as, as we all keep saying, he was such a natural. He, he, lo he had a very casual attitude um, uh, about television, and he was just, he, you know, he didn't try to put on airs. If there's anybody that John McEnroe has tried to copy, not that John needs to emulate anybody, but it was Vetus. He really enjoyed that Vetus made it kind of conversational and, and kind of chummy and didn't act like he had all of a sudden become some great tennis professor. Um, I got to work with Vetus uh, at USA, at ESPN, at CBS. There was a there was a moment when, I mean, we were three kids from Queens when John, Vetus, and I are in the CBS broadcast lounge. And I finally said, I can't. Look at this. Like, <laughs> um, it was great stuff. It was really, really was good stuff. Sort of what I was thinking, Mary, when I was looking at, you guys all were at Port Washington Tennis Academy, which, by yeah. the way, Nick Volteri gets a lot of credit for starting tennis academies, but it seems to me like Port Washington was the place that got it all started. And so many great players coming out of there at that time frame. First of all, what made that place yeah. so special? Number two, why was there a broadcast center for <laughs> students because all of you both Mac and Rose you Vetus are all broadcasters yeah we all seem to think we have something to say uh <laughs> Port was a great place you know the hotbeds in tennis back when I was a kid I grew up thinking god I'd love to be on the hard courts of California I'd be, love to be growing up on the clay courts of Florida Washington Tennis Academy was this great Tracy knows this it's a great nonprofit place and got a scholarship there uh, they gave out a lot of scholarships, just as Nick Boletari had for so many years at the Boletari, now ING Academy. Um, it became, Vetus was the star, and and right behind him was John McEnroe. I mean, we had, it was, a, a, the late, great Harry Hopman was there. Tony Palafox was also there. And if anybody, if John tried to, again, not that he needs to emulate anybody, but if if he had to copy anybody, he copied Tony, who was this terrific Mexican Davis Cup player in his own right, who had nice tight strokes, very you know economical swings, and so there were excellent pros there. And I mean, I spent I spent every day of my life for about five years at Port, and it was a, a great great place. Mary, I love your setup there. The, the the Billie Jean King tennis ball can, the shoes. Uh, it actually looks like you're on a boat. But one thing, Mary, that's missing. <laughs> Is your granddaughter? Yes. Uh, we've got a photo because please keep sending the text message. <laughs> She's already a, a fan of TC Live. Alert viewer. Alert viewer. Good old three month old Rhea Shalar. She is my insights. This kid is absolutely. She's listening to John Lloyd there, and clearly she was impressed with what John had to say. So, uh, um, she, to me, it's been a really rough 2020. Uh, I know I'm speaking for more than just myself, but baby Rhea is by far not only the greatest baby of all time, but the best thing that's happened um, to this planet in 2020. <laughs> I mean, she should wow. have been on the show last week. We had the GOAT show last week. She would have been, you know, uh, number yeah. one greatest of all time babies. <laughs> <laughs> she is, she's, I, it's really what's sustaining me through, uh, through this pandemic, uh, is just knowing that that kid is around and she does a lot of smiling. Well, Mayor, uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and enjoy the time with your granddaughter. Please keep sending us the text messages and the photos. We love them. <laughs> I will. I'm really enjoying what, what Tennis Channel is doing. All right, Mayor. We'll see you soon. Bye, Jimmy. Thanks, Mayor.